Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me say about the events that happened yesterday in Scotland. Where I'm from, if a challenger takes on the champion, breaks the champion's jaw, proceeds to later in a different round, knock the champion down, beats the champion up to the point where on British TV, Jim Watt, late in the fight, I believe in the 12th round, says on the air that that's the first round he's given Burns in some time. Has the fight scored for the challenger, Ray Beltran? In my opinion, from where I'm from, Ray Beltran has won the fight. I simply don't know how anyone could watch this fight and feel that it in any way, shape, or form resembled a draw. As far as I'm concerned, Ricky Burns right now is wearing another man's belt. Ray Beltran, in my opinion, is the uncrowned champion. Now understand the position I'm in. It's a tough one. I was here online, I was waiting for this fight to happen. I was rolling with Ray Beltran in the fight, right? So yes, I'm talking my book to some extent, but I'm also talking as a sports fan. The scoring in this fight was so ridiculous that The Guardian, look it up online, in their post-fight report, actually notes that when the scoring was announced, there was an audible gasp from the crowd. What I want you to do is when you look at the fight, or if you have a tape of the fight, look at the enthusiasm that the Scots have, fights in Scotland, for Ricky Burns as he enters the ring. It's deafening. Right? You can't hear yourself think. Then what I want you to do is after this decision is announced, I want you to listen to that same crowd. Right? You can't fool all of the fans all of the time. The crowd is hushed. There's a subdued, stunned Silence, right? Even though the hometown guy has kept his title by an alleged draw, I believe 90% of those in the building knew they had just witnessed a robbery in broad daylight. Folks, this fight wasn't close. Beltran was even better than I expected. Beltran in my opinion, won this fight by at least three rounds. There was no question going into the 12th round other than could Ricky Burns get a stoppage to keep his title, right? Let's talk about the fight itself and understand the scoring in this fight was so bad that Michael Buffer, who is always a gentleman, after he read the scores, actually said to the crowd, whatever you think of the scoring, let's give a round of applause to the fighters, right? Think about it. If this fight was really close, and if it was ruled a draw, why would Buffer ever say that? You want to know how embarrassing the scoring was? Jim Watt, on the telecast, literally says that he felt that a guy who had won the belt 
was going home without it. Think about that, right? If you're a Ricky Burns fan watching this video, it's time for you to get disturbed about your fighter. He looked bad in the prior fight against Gonzalez. I know that fight goes down as a Ricky Burns victory. I know Gonzalez suffered an injury and couldn't continue. But understand in that fight, all three judges had Gonzalez winning that fight at the time of the stoppage slash retirement. Right, so Ricky Burns, quite frankly, wasn't convincing in the fight before this one. In this one, the fact that he gets his jaw broken in the second round, or dislocated, if you want to split nuance, right, isn't a feather in his cap. It shows he was getting hit upside the jaw. Let me point out, too, <clears throat> that Burns has certain structural problems that I, I don't think he can cure against Beltran. Burns is slick and he's a leaner. <clears throat> in other words, Burns rolls with punches and then leans back so you miss him. Burns is actually pretty good defensively. He's a master at distance. Here's the problem. Father Time eventually starts to dull our reflexes. There's several times in this fight, right? British TV showed several of the replays where Ricky Burns leans back to avoid a left hand from Beltran. And Beltran hits him on the jaw. Right? In other words, Burns is misjudging distance and his reflexes all fight long. Also, when Burns goes over to the ropes, Burns is a guy who likes to fully protect himself. He'll literally put his hands up like this. Now, against Michael Cassidis, Cassidis kept punching. Cassidus punches himself out, right? Burns is protected. Cassidus comes over, throws a lot of punches, right? Burns blocks almost all of the punches. Here's the problem with that style, right? Where a guy comes in and I cover up. What happens if the guy does what Ray Beltran does? Beltran's winning the fight. He's dominating when they're at distance. Then he comes inside. Ricky Burns covers up. Ray Beltran stops punching. Beltran literally patiently stands there and waits for Ricky Burns to do something. You can't have a passive style defense, right? The problem with this, we'll call it Joshua Clotty type defense, where I'm either punching, rolling with punches, or I'm just covering up. It's in the other guy can just walk over to you and wait for you to stop covering up. You want to know what happened? After Beltran comes over to Ricky Burns, watch the action on the ropes, and waits for Burns to throw a punch after Burns turtles. Burns then starts to throw punches, and the minute Burns moves his hand, Beltran would come back with a body shot on the same side of Burns' body. So let's say Burns moves this hand, Beltran would hit him right here in the ribs. Right? I thought Beltran, quite frankly, was dominating this fight. I didn't think it was close. The bet I recommended here online to people who paid for the pick was to take Beltran to win the fight. Hedged with Ricky Burns by decision. That was the bet. I'm guessing when the fight ended, as I was, people were high-fiving themselves. They knew that they had just beaten the casino <clears throat> by a greater than two-to-one margin. Right? They knew it. Then the scoring came down. There's always one lunatic judge out there. Someone who has a scorecard that, quite frankly, can't be justified in any way, shape, or form other than to excuse the poor scoring by saying maybe this judge got swayed by the crowd. Someone curiously had Ricky Burns winning this fight by a few rounds. Is there anyone watching this video who believes Ricky Burns won this fight by multiple rounds? Anyone? I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear the explanation. The second judge had Ray Beltran winning. Even that margin, I thought, was too close. But the second judge has Ray Beltran winning. 
for the third judge to give this fight a draw is simply ridiculous. What did Ricky Burns succeed in doing in this fight? If you read The Guardian, they actually say in their piece that it never seemed as if Ricky Burns was ever winning this fight, right? The uh, Beltran corner, when the draws announced, was as stunned as Pernell Whitaker's corner was a generation ago when they called his fight against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. a draw. Both of those decisions were equally ridiculous. Let me point out, you know, I know Beltran wants to fight in the United States. Ray, you've already beaten this guy in Scotland. What I've found in boxing is that fans aren't going to go for two robberies in the same series. If you polled the crowd as they left the arena, I believe Beltran would have won by a wide margin. You can tell by the lack of suspense when they're reading the judges' scorecards, right? The people in the crowd know there's no suspense. Ricky Burns has lost his title, right? There's no suspense. Then, of course, when, you know, the decision is announced, there's silence. It's subdued, right? Why is it subdued? If the fans thought this was a close fight, people would have broken out cheering when they heard that Ricky Burns had successfully, through a draw, defended his title. There isn't any enthusiasm. No one is happy except Ricky Burns and his corner, right? I'd love to hear a post-fight interview of Michael Buffer. I'm sure Buffer feels the same way Jimmy Lennon felt when he announced the verdict in the Tavares Cloud Gabriel Campillo fight. So I'll say this. You know, in boxing, you always have to be prepared for the bizarre. There's no question about it. This is one of those fights where. I thought the underdog won the fight. I personally am considering Ray Beltran to be the champion in Ricky Burns' weight class. As far as I'm concerned, Ricky Burns has to win back the belt. If Ricky Burns fights anyone other than Ray Beltran in his next fight, in my opinion, he won't be fighting for the title. If you're a Ricky Burns fan, you have to be concerned because Burns doesn't have great power as it is. So he really does need to outbox an opponent. And if clever opponents have figured out how to actually hit Burns as he leans back, and he's hit flush several times, doesn't have a hand up. Because in Burns' mind, he's far enough back not to get hit. Right? If Burns is getting hit on the lean, and if opponents have figured out that Burns doesn't defend himself while throwing punches, in other words, when he turtles, He's not throwing punches. So you can stand in front of him and just wait him out. And if they've also figured out how to hit Burns repeatedly in the body, like Ray Beltran did, then Ricky Burns is in a lot of trouble going forward. Right? Let, let me just point out that, you know, this fight is really a blueprint fight on how to deal with Ricky Burns. Ricky Burns' biggest problem right now is that post Kevin Mitchell, he has put together some uninspiring performances. Let me also say that when a fighter gets a gift, I believe the crowd pays him back later. In other words, uh, years ago, I saw Pernell Whitaker beat Oscar De La Hoya. They gave Oscar De La Hoya a gift that night. The feeling was that Oscar seemed to be favored by judges repeatedly. Then Oscar went out and fought Felix Trinidad. I invite everyone to take a look at that video, right? The judges easily could have given that fight to Oscar De La Hoya. They didn't. 
And at the time, that was a huge fight. That was one of the all-time pay-per-view fights. Both guys were unbeaten. Then Oscar later fought Shane Mosley. Now, I'll agree, Mosley beat Oscar the first fight. But that second fight, in my opinion, wasn't close. Now, I understand there were many at ringside. Brian Kenny, Max Kellerman, who thought Shane Mosley won the rematch. I didn't. I thought Oscar should have charged tuition. I thought he was teaching Shane Mosley head movement and shoulder rolls, right? Shane Mosley doesn't really move his head that much, not even back then. I thought Oscar really was the boxer in the fight. I believe that what happened was that Oscar went from boxing darling to being viewed as a pampered guy in a sport that doesn't look favorably on fighters who are pampered. Right? Ricky Burns, I believe the consensus in Scotland this morning is that Christmas came early for him, that he got a gift last night. You don't want that reputation because, as Nikolai Value have found out, when he got a gift against Evander Holifield, your home crowd will turn on you if you put in another lackluster performance. And that's what happened when. David Hay took the title from Nikolai Valuev. The crowd there actually applauds David Hay and understand that fight was in Germany. But it was clear at the end of that fight the crowd felt that David Hay had won the title. Right? Nikolai Valuev had gone from being a darling to being viewed as pampered, getting undeserved decisions. Ricky Burns right now is right there. Right? Michael Buffer doesn't always say, whatever you think of the decision, let's give these fighters a round of applause. He doesn't say that. Right? The Guardian, in talking about a fight involving a Scot in Scotland, doesn't always say that there was an audible gasp from the crowd when the decision was read. When, of course, that decision didn't have the Scot losing. Right? When you enter the ring, and the crowd is behind you, it's deafening. Listen to Sky Sports. Listen to how they explain the crowd's enthusiasm when Ricky Burns enters the ring. And when that enthusiasm is gone, after a decision is announced 12 rounds later, a decision that doesn't have Ricky Burns losing, in my opinion, and Burns might not know it right now because he still technically has the title, but in my opinion, in the court of public opinion, Ricky Burns has lost this fight. Now, there are ways where Ricky Burns can redeem himself. Fight Beltran again and legitimately beat him. Right? But short of that, I thought Ricky Burns was the loser yesterday. Let me hear from you. To those of you who bought the pick here online, all I can do is say, I gave it my best shot. Gambling has no guarantees. I feel the fighter delivered. Trust me, I'm feeling the pain too because I lost on this one. Anyway, let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And let me just congratulate Ray Beltran. He's been Manny Pacquiao's sparring partner. He's done this the right way. He's fought who he's needed to fight. He's even gone to foreign soil to fight a champion. And in that fight, he's ready, breaks the guy's jaw or dislocates it, knocks the champ down, is hanging around at the end of the fight, convinces the crowd he has earned the title. To that man, I say, champ, congratulations. I'll be watching your fights. Thanks for stopping by.